Another pilot proves flat earth. Do that thing, man, that keeps you up at night. That thing that bothers you, man, that makes you trip. You can't quit thinking about it. You always, that thing, man, that you wake up in the middle of the night, you got a new idea. That's what you got to chase. Because anything... Could the real North Pole be in a place that we don't perceive it to be? This is an old map from the 1500s. It's called the Mercator map. And in this map, it depicts a magnetic mountain right dead in the center, what we would call the North Pole. And this mountain is called Rupus Nigra. And this is a magnetic mountain. And also notice around this mountain are four land masses. And with these four land masses, come out four rivers what's also interesting in the book of genesis it speaks of eden and that there are four rivers which flow from eden another thing to take note of is that you got these mountains surrounding it right here and i want you to keep that in mind now in greek mythology there's a place called hyperborea and if you look at my old videos that I posted in the past, myth and mythology doesn't necessarily mean that something isn't true. It's just a, basically a story that's been passed down through the generations. And so like even with Greek mythology and all that, these people are getting these stories from somewhere and they have some truth to them. So with that in mind, let's read this. So the Hyperboreans were thought to be a mythical people who lived in the far northern part of the known world, right here. And what's interesting is that it uses this same map that I just showed you, this Mercator map, to describe the Hyperboreans. It also goes on to say that despite their location in an otherwise frigid part of the world, so if you watched my last video, they claim that the North Pole is just this wasteland where no one would ever go and no one would ever live. But according to this myth, the Hyperboreans were, to believe, were believed to inhabit a sunny, temperate, and divinely blessed land. And also, in many versions of the story, they lived north of the Ripian Mountains which shielded them from the effects of the cold north wind. Now I told you to remember these mountains that are surrounding it and these mountains can possibly be those Ripian mountains that are shielding these people from that cold wind. And as I was speculated in my last video, could it be that the true North Pole right here in the center is where Eden is? Now entertain this thought with me real quick. Could it possibly be that what people are calling the Hyperboreans in myth could possibly be the camp of the saints dwelling in a divinely blessed place with the Lord their God? And if God is truly dwelling at the north, is this why we see these lights so apparent and so brilliant? I'm building a case here, so just stay tuned and we're gonna dig into this a lot more. The North Pole is another thing that is surrounded in a lot of mystery. And if you look at maps today, you'll see that there's nothing there. It's just a wasteland and that no one would ever wanna go there, obviously, because it's way too cold, it's just ice but you get pictures of these people who supposedly are at the North Pole and they literally have a little flag right there in the ground and we're supposed to believe that that is the North Pole. Now, if you are of a critical thinking mind, doesn't this all look just a little weird you know, they got all these photo ops and we're just supposed to believe them that this is the actual North Pole. So we know that all compasses point to the North. We know that there is a magnetic North. And so we're supposed to believe that all the compasses are pointing to this little flag 
that they have there. And you could get into the magnetic north and true north. I don't, I don't care about all that. Either way, there's nothing there according to what we're fed today. But what if there is something there? I just don't know what this is. It's a map. My father showed me a, a map like this once. Inside the circle is your world and my world. Many others, no one knows how many. The Dark Tower stands at the center of all things. And it stood there from the beginning of time. And it sends out powerful energy. There's an old map called the Mercator map. And you can see in this map that there is a big mountain right in the center. This mountain is said to be called Rupus Negro, which means black rock. And it's at the center of all things. It's at the center of the world, which would be the North Pole. And it's a magnetic mountain, which would make complete sense as to why all the compasses are drawn to the North. What's interesting as well is on this old Mercator map, there are four islands around this rock, this North Pole. In today's maps, all those have been completely erased. And there's also four rivers flowing out. And in the midst of these four islands and four rivers was said to be a whirlpool. And that water rushes round about and descends into the earth. Just as if one was pouring it through a filter funnel. And this would also explain why we have tides. In the book of Genesis, it talks about four rivers running out from the Garden of Eden. And in Genesis, the first river is called Pison. The second river is called Gihon. The third river is Hiddekel. And the fourth is the river Euphrates. Could it be that these geographical locations aren't really where we think that they are? It's very much possible. Would it make sense that Eden was at the center of the earth? And when Adam and Eve were kicked out of Eden, the Lord placed cherubims and flaming swords to guard it and the bible also says that mount zion is on the sides of the north and that's the city of the great king what they are telling us is the north pole i don't believe for a second we are not spinning on a ball going mach 88 through an infinite universe it's just not happening i don't care there's not even an argument. That's not happening. Water always finds level, needs a container. That is something provable. I got off Facebook for a or, um, TikTok for a while because it's just like, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. The fact is we're not on a spinning ball. And, you know, I talked to someone today, someone that was in their 70s, and they laughed at the whole idea that it was a flat earth, and that's okay. That's okay. It's somebody that's actually not done zero research, doesn't care to even look into it because their reality is whatever they've been told since they were kids. I mean, it was a little difficult today for me to see how much people still cling on to that thought that, you know, Australians are boating and kayaking and making love upside down. And I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter. You've never seen curvature. No curvature. No baller. It's it. It's, it's over. There's no curvature. You've never seen it. It's not there. It's not measurable. Nobody that, you know, is an architect, builds railroads, builds 
two hour long bridges that takes two hours to drive, they don't ever account for curvature. They don't account for curvature. No curvature? No. Motherfucking baller. So, y'all are in La La Land. Sorry. Please explain this to me. If Flat Earth is so stupid, then why are the most powerful organizations in the world use it as their logo? And also, things start to get a little weird when you start to look into the space and rocketry stuff. The SR-71 at its top speed starts to tear apart, but I'm supposed to believe this, which is not aerodynamic at all, travels at 22,615 miles per hour with no issues? If you believe Flat Earthers believe we're out on a disc in outer space, you are mistaken. We definitely don't believe we're out on a disc in outer space. For start, it's not this or this. And we're not a floating disc in outer space when we don't even believe in space. So no one's going to be finding or falling off the edge anytime soon. For all we know, it could look something like this. Think about it. Outer space. I mean, come on guys, think about it. Extraterrestrial, terra meaning land or territory. It's been about four years for me that my eyes have been opened and every year it seems like my eyes are opened a little bit more. However, I have believed in flat earth for about as long as COVID's been around. I just can't help but feel sorry for those who just trust NASA, blindly trust NASA, scientists they've never met before, regurgitating information from other people's research that they don't even know. It's just, it's a, it's a true belief. If you wanna see what a star actually looks like, not through the lenses of NASA, watch this video. It's, it's about one of the best ones that I've come across. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Okay, and this right here is just slightly to the left of focus. Still, same pattern. Now you can defocus like this on the moon, the sun, and it doesn't happen. You don't see this pattern. You only see this pattern in the middle of stars. Still looks cool, but, and it shows you the water, the ripples in the water above the firmament, much, much clearer. That's because the eyepiece has been moved closer to the primary mirror, the objective lens of the telescope. So technically you are getting a closer look. It's just moved too close, so close that the center obstruction that holds the secondary mirror on the front of the telescope has come into view. Let me back it off. And it looks like you're zooming out. Man, look at that. See, now we don't have a hole or a donut anymore. Look at that.
So the astronauts on Apollo took uh, their helmets off for a quick little picture. And here they are on the moon without their helmets. You see them? All three of them. Just remember that these guys have their stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And they didn't get it for acting on Hollywood. But they sure got it for acting. This shit looks like crap If I tipped it over then it would collapse It looks like a piece of trash Say it went to outer space Don't make me laugh Big ass gap, big, big ass gap It's a big ass gap That's a big ass gap oh, Hold on man You expect for me to believe this? This? This right here? You expect for me to believe this? I, I think I made something like this in my living room when I was a kid with uh, pillows and uh, shower rods and cardboard, maybe a little, a little aluminum foil. Seriously? I'm supposed to believe this? Come on, man. Come on, man. We're supposed to believe that's the truth? And we're supposed to know that these astronauts went to the moon and this is how they responded? This is the truth? Hey, I just want the truth. I mean, are we really being honest about where the money goes? I mean, come on now, $388 million for this thing? That's the truth? Come on, man. My boy Brisky sent this to me and thanks, man, cause Wow, they expect you to believe this? Holy... Today we're going to take a look at China's spacewalk footage. And let me tell you, NASA, you really got to get your boys. I feel like NASA needs to have like this get-together conference where they teach other space agencies how to properly fake space because... Look at this! Are you kidding me? They expect you to believe that's real. That is abuse to you. I feel bad for you. When we take a look at China's and Russia's spacewalk footage, it's the fakest thing I've ever seen. What is this? A flat earth spacewalk? It is just so embarrassing for China to put out things like this. I feel like they need to be like, hey NASA, can I get the Big Easy Studios contact information so they can teach us how to fake space? I encourage you to go pull this kind of stuff up on your computer screen and take a nice close look. It seems that when we look at Russia or China, their footage is just... Piper! Piper. I never really saw anybody use this as proof yet, but I was waiting for the day because it's obviously propaganda I mean if you watch her sit down with the NASA guy it's so disgustingly scripted I, I almost like threw my fucking phone out the window propaganda like a mother <laughs> and 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 what's we call it should be ashamed of themselves National Geographic yeah you should be ashamed of yourself I, I can't believe how far the lie runs but look there goes your 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 curvature, all right, supposedly happening right there, but unfortunately, the other side of the lake is right here, bro. And then not only that, you see this other little line up here? That's the bank of of the other side of the freaking uh, lake. I don't know if you know that or not, but if you go back and watch the video, yes, you can see the other side of the lake very clearly, and you can see also the bank of the lake with the trees and everything. The earth is flat, bro. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, right? Hey, can I share something with you? Like, I'm literally so excited to share this with you. What is the very first verse in the Bible? Just go ahead and say it to yourself. In the beginning, God created, created the heaven that is Strong's H8064. What is the very next thing that God uses that H8064? 064 heaven and God called the firmament heaven God the creator of everything the king of kings the lord of lords what is the first thing that he says he literally tells us and he is so proud of the fact that he created the firmament heaven the hard rocky pounded out firm dome that is mentioned in Ezekiel 
everything else we know about the firmament, the hard glass dome structure that is supporting the waters above, let the waters under the firmament be gathered together. God was so proud about this that he literally put it in the very first verse of the Bible. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The flat earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al-Biruni and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now, and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.